Welcome to the mic drop. Now, before we get into tonight's mic drop, I need to address the devastating tragedy in Texas, where per their governor, Greg Abbott, 14 kids and a teacher were shot and killed. Now, we use this space to talk about the bigger issues affecting our community. But when we do this, we like to make sure we have the most updated information as possible. So tomorrow, I'll address the shooting here once we have a clearer picture of exactly what happened. By the way, tomorrow also marks a different tragedy that our country is still recovering from. It's been two years since the day George Floyd was murdered on a Minneapolis street by Derek Chauvin, a now former police officer and current resident of a Minnesota correctional facility. It also marks the beginning of a nationwide period of reckoning. Remember that? The moment where America looked into the faces of its black children and said, I believe you. You don't have to tell me about it anymore or try to convince me. I watched it happen. I saw it with my own eyes and the horror has moved me to lock arms with you in support of your demands for justice and reform. And that's what we did. Taken up in the streets, we showed up and showed out in a beautifully unified multiracial front, receiving praise and promises of change from inspired leaders in both the political and corporate worlds. Watching it all come together, George's murder, while bringing with it a profound sense of anger and sadness, also brought with it a tentative sense of hope. A feeling that now that the country's eyes were open, we would see a long overdue change. Well, here we are, two years later. And while yes, there has been some incremental change resulting from a few honest attempts at reform, the reckoning appears to have burned out which is of no surprise to anyone in the community. We've been here before. We don't have a whole lot of faith. We've seen the positive energy. We've heard the promises. We've watched them go unfulfilled. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, meaningful legislation aimed at police reform, failed in the Senate last March. Blocked there by Republicans unwilling to support items such as the end of qualified immunity, the banning of no-knock warrants, the creation of a nationwide police misconduct registry, and the banning of racial and religious profiling, amongst others. Just imagine the audacity of opposing a police misconduct registry or the banning of racial and religious profiling. And you get us right here, right now in 2022. And while the bill sits unsigned by President Biden, innocent citizens like Amir Locke will continue to die in no-knock raids. It's just a matter of time. Or another group of citizens, let's say a collegiate lacrosse team, will have their civil rights violated on a highway under dubious pretenses. It's a hell of a thing. Waking up every day wondering if your country is ever going to do right by you and the people you love. You want and you hope that they will. You try to believe a change is coming. And then you remember that the shooting deaths of innocent school children, their children, also didn't bring about a change. Didn't and probably won't. And then you get dressed and you go on about your day. Tomorrow, a statue honoring George Floyd is scheduled to be erected at Tom Bass Park in his hometown of Houston, Texas and there'll be remembrances and celebrations of his life in different locations around the country. But while these are going on, remember that a bill bearing his name, meaningful legislation that if it existed could have possibly saved his life is dead in the well of the Senate. Think about that as you think about him, then go about the rest of your day. Rest easy, George. The efforts begun in your name are still going strong. 